Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another daily Q&A. So today we're going to be answering a question that was sparked from the previous video where I was attempting to help somebody uh, figure out the source of 80 to 100 ppm of nitrates in their reef tank. And as I mentioned in that video, it was the rock, or at least I felt it was the rock. Based on everything else that they were telling me, I really had a, a strong suspicion it was coming from the rock. And you guys tend to agree with that. Now the question coming from the comment section of that video is, is there a way to remove the nitrates from the rock without having to remove the rock from the main display or the aquarium itself? And uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about some things that you can do at three different methods here that you can attempt to do to get those levels down. And then we're going to talk about my preferred method, uh, which I used here in the 300 uh, back when I originally set it up. It's something that I recommend most of you guys do either way, regardless of uh, getting used rock or dry rock. So um, one thing I want to uh, mention before we get started is if you use these methods or you try these methods, there's not a guarantee that it's actually going to work. Um, what I mean is if you have a ton of nitrates and phosphates and you have really old rock and it's got a ton of stuff leaching out of it, you can do these methods and it's going to take a long, long time. Again, depending on the system and what you got going on, this stuff could take years uh, because you got to remember this rock didn't just magically absorb all these nitrates in, in an overnight period. It, it took months and months of mistakes, if not years of mistakes of overfeeding and high levels this and high levels that, that contributed to the rock actually becoming becoming a sponge and then eventually leaching that stuff out. Now the only reason, <clears throat> reason why I'm like burping over here, now the only reason why it's leaching out is because you actually uh, have a cleaner tank now. You're, you're doing things that you should be doing and uh, yeah, the rock is just letting that stuff out given the fact that it doesn't have to hold on to it anymore. So just keep in mind that there is a fine line between uh, continuing these methods for an extended period of time, wasting money, wasting resources, and wasting time, opposed to just kind of starting over and avoiding it from the get-go. So that's something you're going to have to determine uh, through your own process. Now with that said, let's go to move on to some of the methods you could use to remove the nitrates and phosphates uh, from your reef tank. So first things first is doing larger consistent water changes. As you can imagine, if you have a 300 gallon tank and you have to do 50% water changes, uh, the amount of money and salt and water that that's going to take is going to be significant. So I wouldn't recommend this method unless you have a smaller tank or what we consider a smaller tank in a hobby. Sub 55 gallons, I think that's probably okay. But if you're up there at 75, 100, 120, 220s, and you know, so on and so on, 50% water changes can get expensive depending on your salt and kind of the way you're going about getting your water and all that kind of stuff. So 50% uh, water changes, yes, they remove the nitrates and, nitrates and phosphates. It's a good way to just get it out of the tank and get some new water in there and kind of continue the process. Again, it can be very expensive, so that's going to be your call on what you want to do. Next thing uh, you can uh, do is add a bio pellet reactor. Now, if you're not familiar with bio pellets are, uh, they are these little mini little pellets that grow beneficial bacteria that process nitrates. Uh, I think it's like 16 to 1 nitrates and then to phosphate ratio based on what they do process. I have a few videos on the channel. Um, I did have one on the 125. It was pretty successful. Now the pros of having a bio pellet reactor is that uh, you can dial down the bio pellet. Say you have a, a I don't know, a phosphane, a phosphane 150 and it's pretty much full to the top. As you notice that your levels are staying, are coming down and being consistent, you can remove some of those bio pellets to kind of keep those levels where you want them to be because there will be a point where there won't be any more nitrates coming out of the rock. So if your bio pellets have been actively working and getting those nitrates and processing uh, that stuff in your tank, at some point you're going to have to remove some of those bio pellets depending on your other feeding habits and methods that you've got going on in the tank, nutrient export wise. And uh, you can dial easily dial that stuff down with a bio pellet reactor. Now there are some cons to bio pellet reactors. One, uh, they're pretty harsh on your pumps. I find that even if you run your uh, out tube or out port, is that the word I'm looking for? Even if you run the exit line of the water coming from the bio pellet reactor into a skimmer, which you should be doing so it kind of skims off the excess bacteria, it still could be really harsh on your return pumps and your power head. So keep that in mind. Um, if you do use a bio pellet reactor, I recommend you up your maintenance on your pumps, uh, you know, other than being once a year, maybe every six months or every three months, just to help. Re, you know, reduce the um, bacteria film building up on the power heads and the magnets. You want to get in there and get that stuff cleaned up. Uh, trust me, I've, I've done a lot of damage to some pumps on the 125. Um, I think I started off with the Jabo 6500 or something like that. I killed that pump um, and, and was forced to upgrade to the DC uh, 12,000. So, uh, yeah. So, yes, there are there are benefits to the biopillar reactor, but surely the con of ruining your pumps. Um, also, 
Uh, if you have a, a power outage for a significant amount of time and you're not getting flow through that biopellet reactor, uh, that means it's not getting oxygen and then those biopellets will eventually die off and you kind of got to start over. Uh, another uh, con to biopellets is if you're not familiar with how to set them up or how to use them properly, uh, you can overdose relatively quickly and run into some really big drops and fluctuations in your nitrates which can you know, lead to coral stress and issues that you have in your tank. So if you plan on adding a biopellet reactor, uh, go slow. Follow directions, there's plenty of videos out there. I know that I have a couple, but there's plenty of other people who have more experience with it than I do. And uh, follow their directions and go slow, and you should be successful, okay? Uh, next thing you could do is, and which I prefer for every, for every system, is to add some source of macroalgae or some kind of uh, scrubber, algae scrubber of some sort, just because having natural uh, removal methods of nitrates and phosphates is always good. Um, some of the pros to having a, a Chato reactor is you get to grow that Chato out and then you can uh, bring it to your local fish store and you can use that uh, store credit or you can sell it to buddies or at frag swaps or whatever. People are always you, uh, always looking for macroalgae. So it's a good source of income if you want to buy some extra things or pay for salt, but it's also a really good way to remove nitrates and phosphates from your tank. So uh, yeah. Now moving on to, uh, I guess the cons of, I would say macroalgae or scrubbers. I don't really see any cons to uh, algae, like macroalgae, but when it comes to scrubbers, I find that uh, if you get a really big one and you run the light a long time and you're just starting out, they tend to strip tanks relatively quickly just because they're so efficient. Now on the downside of that is if, again, if you have a power outage and you're not getting flow or you're not getting the light, uh, to that macroalgae, there's a good chance that that macroalgae will dry up and die and you kind of got to clean it off and start over. But other than that, there's not really too many cons to either one of those methods and depending on your space, uh, you know, go ahead and uh, you know, choose which one you want. But you should definitely have some kind of uh, natural uh, filtration or removal of nutrients on your setup. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much the three methods that I would recommend when it comes to removing um, nitrates or excess nitrates or even phosphates from your reef tank. Again, depending on the size of your tank and what you got going on in your financial stuff situation budget wise, uh, these methods might be okay. But let's go to move on to what I recommend you should do from the very beginning, regardless of your setup. That not only will save you from having to do all this crap, but will you know set you up for success early on. So that method is curing your rock ahead of time. And yes, I've talked about it probably a thousand times already. And uh, you just have to do it. I don't care if it's dry rock or it's live rock or it's rock you got from the fish store or rock you got from somebody you know Joe Schmo down the road. You need to cure your rock. And I have a video, if you go to the 300 gallon playlist, there's a video on how I cured the rock for this tank. And it sat in uh, a, these, this Pukuni, Pukuni, Pukani, Pukuni, I said it twice today. I edited out the first cut. Uh, this Pukani rock uh, was relatively dirty stuff. So I went ahead and put it in 55 gallon bins, filled it up with water, and then essentially just let that stuff run for three months, did 50% water changes, did 100% water changes at some points, depending on high, how uh, high the nitrates were in the tank or the, the, the uh, barrels there. But uh, yeah, so being able to isolate your rock in a smaller container, not only is gonna save you a ton of money and you can do 100% water changes without worrying about killing off fish or coral or anything like that, you can move nutrients faster through that through that method. You can save money through that method, and uh, it just allows you to kind of monitor the rock and see how it's going. And at some point, you can test your nitrates and phosphates and be like, okay, it's consistently good. Let's try it. You know, try it in a week or two. If it's still consistently good and your levels are where they should be, then that rock is ready to go into your tank and kind of start from there. Uh, I think curing your rock early on is a really good base. And as you guys know, we're building, you know, we're building a house here. Uh, your foundation is the rock. If your rock is dirty or your rock isn't cured or it doesn't have the beneficial bacteria or it doesn't have the things that it needs to be successful or to run the tank or to hold up the rest of the tank, then uh, it's not going to work out. So uh, curing your rock is the number one thing I recommend everybody should do. But if you bypass that and you're running into some issues, you can try the things I mentioned previous in this video and see how they work out for you. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think that's it. I, there's probably a few things I gotta edit from this video, but uh, yeah just some stuttering and whatever. Anyways, guys, if you want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on, and I want to mention, uh, yes, 90% of the coral is out of stock. Um, this tank is getting pretty empty. I got two low boys in the front here. One of them's completely empty. One of them's got stuff in it, and then that tub right there is uh, its about half full. Uh, the reason is, is because you guys bought all my stuff, so <laughs> I kind of grow some things back in. Plus, there's a lot of stuff I got to cut, and I don't like keeping things in stock that are not cut and healed completely because you'll purchase it and it's not healed and ready to go and then I gotta hold the order and it's just, 
it's not working out. So other than that, guys, uh, if you have an order that's kind of waiting to go out, understand that it's just taking time to process them and um, doing the best that I can. So appreciate all the support, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.